Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to America once again. We're going to return to Illinois and have a look at another one of the Chicago beers that I got from Shiosk over in Copenhagen. So as I've told you before, these guys very recently did a little bit of a kind of Chicago Beer Week event where they imported a lot of different things from Chicago for us to buy. And um, the beers that I've had so far I've been pretty impressed with actually, but for this one we're going to do a completely different style. The other ones that I had were IPAs. So for this one, we're going to go to Half Acre Beer Company and we're having a taste of their original Reaper. Uh, but this is the blueberry version of that. So this guy comes in at 6% ABV and probably the best way to describe this beer is as a, a sweet stout. I think that's the style category that this one would fit into. But really looking forward to this. I have heard some very, very good things about this brewery. Um, one of my long-term followers, Jesse Holden, he sent me a load of the... Um, the a couple of Chicago beers and um, before they actually started importing them over here mainly Pipeworks of course and uh, he's been telling me that this is a pretty good brewery and I'm sure this is one that he's mentioned to me on a couple of occasions so special shout out to him because he was the one who introduced me to Chicago beers and of course I'll put the link to Shiosk in the description for you below and you can have a look at all the different things that they've got but probably my favourite beer shop that you're going to find in Copenhagen and as I've told you before for us in Europe it's very cool to get things from different states in America because I know there's some crazy laws about taking beer over state borders and things like that and most of the stuff that we get in Europe tends to be from California or from Colorado mainly although we get some of the other big breweries like Founders and stuff like that too but really looking forward to trying this one as I say 6% um, sweet stout this beer blueberry essence in it and also some Equinot hops too which will be quite interesting I've never had a stout with Equinot in it but really looking forward to it and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Half Acre Beer Company very first time I'm trying one of their beers there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is huge they appreciate it so anyway on to my brewery notes then about Half Acre Brewing Company so as I mentioned to you Half Acre Beer Company are based in Chicago Illinois and they were founded back in 2006 by Gabriel Magliaro who had witnessed the craft beer boom in Colorado where he'd lived for a number of years but he moved to Chicago to study at the School of Art Institute and um really he just said he let his creativity go into beer, he was trying a lot of different craft beers when he was in Colorado and also trying um, some of the local stuff when he went to Chicago as well, but originally their beers were developed in Chicago in one of the rooms in his house, but they brewed them at the Sand Creek Brewery in Black River Falls in Wisconsin originally, and the first beer was released in August of 2007 which was their Lager beer, so in 2009 they opened up their own brewery on Lincoln Avenue which is in the North Centre District of Chicago, and they opened up a tap room just from, across from in 2012 and then later they added a kitchen in 2016 because of how popular their beers were becoming. But in 2015 they opened a second larger brewery on Balmoral Avenue which also has a tap room as well and now they've got a production of around 50,000 hectolitres of beer per year. Most of the beers that these guys produce um, are IPAs and things like that. They are more of a hop forward brewery. They do have a sour series of beers as well, which looks really, really interesting. So I guess it, I guess in some ways it's quite unusual that my first beer that I'm trying from them is one of their darker beers because that doesn't really seem to be where their main focus is. But as I say, I was very curious about this one. The choice of beers that I had at Shiosk from Half Acre was um, there was a coffee stout there and there was also this blueberry stout, which I thought sounded really interesting. I've not had a sweet stout in uh, quite a little while actually, so this was the main reason that I uh, that I chose this one so yeah really curious to see how this one turns out like I said Jesse who's followed the channel for a number of years now tells me this is a very very good brewery and it's cool to try different things from it uh, from different parts of America so yeah I guess that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now if you want to learn a little bit more check out the brewery website in the description below you can uh, follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things like that and keep up to date with all the latest goings on but from what I understand they are a fairly prolific brewery they've quite regularly got um, new beers and 
things like that coming out. So if you get the chance uh, to go and visit their tap rooms and stuff, have a go at it. I really need to go to Chicago and have a taste of some of the, the different beers and things over there. It would be cool actually to pick up some more um, Illinois beers. So I need to get back to America. It's been about eight years or so since I was there. I used to go very regularly when I was young, but it's been a long time since I was out uh, west. It's been uh, My focus has been more east in, uh, in recent years. But yeah, let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself then. So as you can see, nice artwork on this one. And this is one of the things that half half acre from what I understand have won um a lot of different uh, awards for the artwork on their cans recently and I think it's local artists and stuff like that that are uh, contributing the artwork there and I guess probably um, Gabriel is, is designing some of these labels himself since he has a trade as an artist I guess but there you can see it. here is the half acre brewing company symbol there you can just see that on the back of the can yep pretty nice there. Um, doesn't say too much, it's just got all the American government warnings and things like that on this one. This of course is a 440 milliliter can. I always complain about these when it comes to um, American breweries and stuff. I don't know why they don't just do half litres, use the, the metric system, you know, all of that kind of thing. But uh, European breweries are copying this as well and I don't understand it. Use the standard European measurements. To me it just seems stupid. They're just... I don't get that, but it's one US pint, which if I remember correctly, is either it's either 440 milliliters or it is 473. I'm not sure. I think it's 16 fluid ounces, the Americans call it, which I'm sure is 473, but I don't know why I bother learning those, because as I say, it's not a real measurement anyway. But um, yeah, so it should be a really interesting beer, this one. As I say, 6% ABV. <laughs> and uh, sweet stout with milk sugar and blueberry essence, uh, dry hopped with equinox hops. So yeah, without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. A little bit of excitement as it opens up there, a little bit of it trying to escape, but let's get it out and into the glass. Oh, lost a little bit of it there. But there we go. You can smell some of the nice chocolatey malts on this as you pour it. I'm guessing that's somewhere about two thirds of it out of the can. We'll just let that settle there for the moment. Lost a little bit of it down the side. But yeah, let's get rid of the brewery notes and we'll get on with the tasting then. So yeah, as you can see with this beer, it's poured a really nice kind of dark ebony kind of rosewood colour. Pretty much what you would expect for any stout to be honest, apart from a white stout obviously. Um, but you've got a nice two finger frothy, I would say a nice kind of almost like a macchiato head or, or macchiato, I can't pronounce Italian coffee names, but yeah, um, kind of like a nice macchiato coloured head on this one, so a nice hot chocolatey coffee kind of head colour on this one, so nice kind of, I guess you could say a medium kind of beige, medium tan sort of thing. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones going up towards uh, the bottom of that head there. If I put my fingers behind the glass, I think if I held this one up to the light, yeah, it is quite hazy. There's not too much light coming through that. On the edge, it has a little bit of a kind of almost Coca-Cola coloured um, hue to it. But yeah, pretty much in terms of appearance, not surprising at all for what you would expect from, uh, from a stout beer. But yeah, it looks very, very nice. So yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get with this one. As I'm moving this beer around, you do get some really nice kind of fruity notes coming out of it, which is cool. But yeah, with this beer you can smell a little bit of roasty black malt in there. Good bit of sweet milky chocolate though, that's the main thing. You can smell there's a little bit of a higher cocoa chocolate in this one, maybe sort of 80%-ish cocoa, but definitely it has that nice kind of sweet note to it. If I was actually... You know, if I was blindfolded and I was smelling this beer, in terms of the aroma, I might actually think that this one is a black IPA. Because it does have, you know, you can smell the roasty black malts in this one. And you can also, but you, you, as I say, you get some of that chocolatey note in there. But it does have a good little bit of hoppy character. You can smell a little bit of that limey note, um, which is what you'd expect from the Equinot. So that's really interesting. The blueberries for me... Um, aren't that obvious in this one. I'm surprised to be honest that if they wanted blueberry flavours in this, I don't know why they didn't hop it with mosaic because mosaic gives you that nice tangerine blueberry kind of thing and I would assume that if it's, um, you know, if you're mixing it with the darker malts, because that changes, that can change the, the taste that you get from these fruity esters from the hops. It can really change a lot to us. I would have been interested to see how mosaic would have turned out in this case, because if you put it in an IPA, of course, it does give you the blueberry flavours, but they've got the blueberry in this one with flavour essence rather than extracting it from the hops. But yeah, really, really nice aroma to this one. As I say, you can pick up a little bit of the an almost lactosey note to this one. When you sugar it up, you can smell a nice bit of that roasty quality to the beer as well. 
But yeah, lovely, lovely smelling beer that. I like how everything goes together in this one. So yeah, a little bit of blueberries. It has a little touch of earthiness to it as well, I think. I think there is a little bit of an earthy hop to this one. And a little touch, you can pick up a little bit of a, a grassy floral kind of thing. And when you're using Equinot, I'm sure it's like 11-12% alpha acid, so you are going to get a little bit of that out of it, regardless of what beer style you uh, you use it in. You are going to get a little bit of that grassy floral kind of thing. But as I say, a little bit of earthy character in there. can pick up the blueberries. There is a little bit of the lime from the Equinot coming out too. And the malt beast, roasted black malts, bit of that kind of brown sugar in there. And there's a good mix of the chocolate, some high cocoa chocolate, some milkier chocolate. But also it has a little bit, it's almost got like a little bit of a kind of roasty brownie sort of uh, kind of thing to it, this beer, which is um, which is really, really nice. So, as I say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer before you get stuck in. But let's have a taste of this one now. So this one is the original Reaper Blueberry Edition from Half Acre Beer Company in Chicago in Illinois. Once again, shout out to my long-term subscriber, Jesse Holden, and let's get stuck into this beer. Thank you, of course, to Shiosk for importing all of these things and always giving us cool stuff. Slanja, skull. Oh yeah. First thing you're going to notice about this beer is how smooth it is. It's a ridiculously smooth beer, this one. That's the, that's my first impression of it. And I think most of the flavour in this beer, it, it take, I think this is one that's going to take your palate a sort of few sips to adjust to, to be quite honest. Oh, I can hear the dog. But yeah, with this one, you can definitely smell some nice roasty black malt. You can taste some nice roasty black malts in there. That first off blankets the middle of your tongue, but it's smoothed out almost completely by what I'm guessing is lactose. They've said they've put milk sugar in this, so it'll be lactose sugar that they've added to this beer. So the beer, you can get a little bit of that roasty black malt taste to it, but it's smoothed out a little bit just by the, the kind of lactose sugars that are in this beer, which is very, very nice. I like how that kind of goes together. On top of that, or when the flavour sort of mellows out a little bit, you can feel your palate just almost drying out a little bit, and some of the more roasty black malts push their way out a little bit more, but definitely some nice kind of sweet chocolatey quality in there. There's almost a little bit of a kind of grainy biscuity thing going on with this one too. And yeah, it's just interesting how everything's going together in this one. Let's put the last bit of it in to the bottle, or to the glass rather. Can't speak today and see how we get on with this one. Look at that, lovely. But yeah, I like how everything's going together in this one. It definitely takes your palate a little bit of time to adjust to this beer. So for me, it almost has a little touch of a kind of cakey, brownie sort of thing to it. Um, it's not the sweetest of sweet stouts that I've had. This one's more a kind of smooth sweet stout, if that makes sense. It's all about the smoothness of this malt base, but there is definitely a little bit. It's almost like the aftertaste you get after you've had like a muffin or a brownie, a chocolate brownie or chocolate muffin, something like that. That's the kind of flavour I'm getting from this one. The chocolate flavours in this one, they do come across as being a little bit more of a kind of higher cocoa chocolate. Not quite 80-90% cocoa, maybe around the sort of 70-ish uh, percent mark in there. But yeah, there's not too much in the way of brown sugar in this. Maybe a little bit of a kind of biscuity quality as always. One of the, my favourite descriptors for that is kind of... Um, McVitie's Digestive. I don't know if you get those in America, but those kind of biscuits that we have in back home in Scotland. They are um, they're kind of like that. We get them in Sweden here as well, of course. But um, yeah, it, it's that kind of a, that kind of vibe that's going on with the um, the malt base for me. But it's certainly that lactose sugar that they'll have put in this beer gives it a lot of um, gives it a lot of smoothness. It's interesting this one. It's quite different from the other sweet stouts I've had. It's not quite as sweet as I would have expected when it was listed as a sweet stout. And it's certainly. I will say though, in that, in fairness to it, it does sweeten up a little bit. The further into the, the more that you have of it, the more your palate adjusts to this beer, it does sweeten up a little bit for me. On the hoppy side of things, then back corners of the palate, I'm definitely getting a little touch of earthiness there, and it just smooths out a little bit as you come further forward along the palate. I don't think they've only used Equinot in this one. They'll be using Equinot as the dry hop mainly to add like flavour and aroma. I think there's another 
hop in here. I don't know, maybe if they, they might use Will You Met or something like that. That's quite a favourite um, hop to use for stouts and things like that. Summit is another one that I've seen that people use too. But yeah, you can definitely pick out a little bit of that um, that nice earthiness there. It smooths out the, as you come further forward towards the front of the tongue and you get just a little bit of that floral aromaticity, just a little tiny bit of that at the front corners of the palate, then round the very front curve of the tongue, it's just a little bit lighter and grassy. You've just got a little bit of that light kind of grassy citrus there. And of course behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer. So let's focus on the fruity side of things now then. Yeah, and to me, I can get a little bit of the limey flavours, which you would expect from the... There is definitely a little element of lime to that. Um, it maybe almost has a little bit of a kind of kiwi flavour to it as well, which is quite interesting, to be honest. I, I think a little touch of a, a kind of kiwi lime sort of thing going on with this one. But then when you move further into the aftertaste, that for me is when the blueberries start to come out around the front edge of your tongue the blueberry essence really starts to come out and I've always found this if you add fruit to the beer or if you add like essence, flavour essence to the beer when it's fruity flavours they come out on the very tip of your tongue rather than just behind the front curve of the palate it's almost like they suppress a little bit of the kind of IBUs of the beer like I've always found the hops come out on the very edge of your tongue and when you add these essences and fruits and things to the beer it just suppresses that um, sort of uh, that it just suppresses that kind of um, hoppy, almost the hoppy bitterness a little bit to the beer, but I like how this one kind of comes across. Yeah, just pay attention to that flavour behind the front curve of your palate there, because it is quite interesting. Like I say, a little bit of a limey note in there, and I think a sort of kiwi lime sort of thing. I'm starting to get more and more of a roasted black malty character out of this one as well. And I can feel that it's spreading a little bit towards the front of the tongue too. So for me, this is a really interesting kind of concoction of flavours. Um, it's it's not, as I say, not one of the sweeter sweet stouts that I've come across. Because that's how it would feel. It's a, if it's a milk stout, I guess, you would kind of classify it as a sweet stout. It does maybe have a little touch of the kind of Irish dry stout character to it as well, I would think. It's got a little bit of that, but it's some, you know, maybe it's some kind of hybrid between the dry stout and the sweet stout, but definitely an interesting beer that. And you know, as I say, this brewery are more famed for their IPAs. It's kind of unusual that my first taste of one of their beers is a, a sweet stout, but to me, yeah, an interesting beer. I'd love to try the original one without any of the essences and stuff like that and just see how the beer, how the original one kind of comes across. Um, I think that would be a very, very interesting um, experience because from when I had a little look, I had a little look at Untapped and things, and there's quite a few different versions of this uh, original Reaper. There was blueberry and violet and other stuff like that in there. But to me, an interesting beer, so a really cool one to review from these guys, and hopefully I can try one of the IPAs at some point in the the fairly near future. But yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, then for me. Top end of mid-bodied this one, maybe the bottom end of full-bodied, somewhere around that kind of range. I would say that about this beer. Carbonation is very smooth, the mouthfeel overall is very, very smooth. A little bit creamy almost as well, and that will be from the lactose uh, milk sugars and stuff that they've put in this beer. I don't know if dextro, if they would have put some dextrose in here too. Those two sugars, of course, you can. The lactose sugars you would use to create the milkshake IPAs and things like that. And I think dextrose you probably can use for that as well. But yeah, nice little touch of hoppy bitterness to this one, especially in the back corners of your palate. Um, but it's not too high in terms of IBUs. You know, I think at most out of this one, at the absolute most, you're going to get about 30 IBUs out of this beer. Maybe it's probably near 20, though, to be fair. Um, malt base. Good balance between the roasty, bitter qualities of the beer, but it's smoothed out a lot by the milk sugars that are in there. Um, and overall, you've got a nice little bit of a, a juicy fruit. Now, as I say, a sort of lime, kiwi kind of thing for me, and then the blueberries start to come out a bit more in the aftertaste. So overall, it's a really interesting beer, and one that has kind of tested my palate a little bit. So um, so yeah, really interesting to, uh, to review this one, and something a little bit more unusual. That's what you want when you've done about 14, 1500 beer reviews. You do want things that are going to test your palate a little bit, this beer certainly has done that so yeah let's leave it at that for this so this one was the original reaper blueberry edition from the half acre beer company in chicago in illinois another one of the beers that i picked up from shiosk over in copenhagen i go over there 
about once a month from uh, from Sweden and it's always cool to pick up some goodies when you're there of course but yeah interesting beer this one and I'm glad that I was able to review this for you here on the channel so yeah let's leave it at that once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff do check out my social media links are in the description below let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below <coughs> pardon me let me know what your favourite beers are from the Half Acre Brewing Company as well and hopefully I can return to these guys in the fairly near future I do need to get over to, to Chicago and have a taste of some of these other beers because this little mini series that I've done um, has proved to me that there's some great stuff and this is the last of the four beers that I picked up from Shios so hopefully I can return to Chicago fairly soon but yeah once again thank you for watching and I will catch you guys very soon the original Reaper Blueberry Edition from Half Acre Beer Company in Chicago in Illinois. Slanger just now and I'll catch you guys very soon. School.